Hi, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the best BST863 hot air rework station and this was provided to me around a month ago by Banggood and I've been using it since then to form an opinion on its use and operation. So this is currently retailing on the Banggood website on offer for $189 which is a really good price for a hot air rework station with these specifications. Um, and it looks to be sort of directly competing with the very popular Quick 861 hot air rework station. And it appears to have quite a lot of similarities, so the handle looks quite similar. The general form factor is identical, as is the, um, the handle for holding the handpiece. And there are some similarities with the front panel, although the Quick has sort of up-down buttons for airflow and temperature, whereas we've actually got a little touch screen on the front of this one to control the temperature and the airflow and then we've got the three presets at the bottom. In terms of its general specifications, you can get this in a 110 volt or 220 volt version, and it has a 1.2 kilowatt heater in the handle, so a very powerful heater, and it's got a 120 liters per minute uh, brushless blower inside, and we'll take a look inside shortly. Uh, but those are very high specifications, and I can't imagine what you'd need to use 120 liters per minute for. If you watched my previous video, I used this to reflow some components and even at 10% airflow it was very close to blowing some of the small components off the board so somewhere between 5 and 10% seems to be adequate airflow for most users um, so the fact that you've got 120 litres per minute airflow I can't imagine what you'd want to use that for. Right so in terms of the user interface we've got this little touch screen on the front and by pressing set you can then change the temperature up and down. And then pressing set again allows you to change the airflow. And then that stores it. And the nice thing is that you can change any of these settings without the um, handle being out of the cradle. Because on some hot air stations, you can't change any of the settings until the fan and everything's running. So to use the hot air station, all you have to do is remove the handle from the cradle. And that wakes up the device from sleep mode spins up the fan and then starts heating up the heating element. And one thing that I've noticed with this is it's very quick to heat up. I guess that's part of having a 1.2 kilowatt heater in the handle. But if I remove it from the cradle now, you can see it climbs up to temperature within about three seconds or so and it's ready to use. And then when you put it back in the cradle, it spins up the fan to maximum flow rate and turns off the heater um, so that uh, the inside of the handle doesn't cook with the latent heat. And you can see it's got a little moon there to indicate that it's going into sleep mode. And then if you want to save your settings, you can hold down uh, any of these buttons to store the preset. And you can also change between Celsius and Fahrenheit by pressing the button on the right hand side. In general, I tend to prefer a hot air station that has dials rather than up down buttons, but actually um, it's not too onerous to change the settings and the presets do make it very quick to uh, restore your settings depending on what you're doing. So you might have one for reflowing large components, so lots of heat and lots of airflow. And then you might have another one for just reflowing small components. So in using this device, I think the only thing that I've really noticed that is slightly annoying is, other than the beeper, there is some PWM noise coming from the blower at certain airflow rates and particularly when it spins up you hear it quite loudly. It's not too bad, but uh, if I put my microphone near the device, you might hear it when I wake it up. So it kind of sounds like a squealing noise, but that's actually PWM noise. I don't think it's anything to do with the bearings, uh, but it's only there really while it's spinning up. It's just uh, a very slightly offensive noise. And just on the back of the device, we've got an IEC connector with a built-in fuse, and that's rated for six amps. We've got this little port here for a ESD lead that comes with the device and then just some vents to provide the airflow into the blower um, so that you can blow it out of the handle. So inside the box as well as these two items you also get an ESD lead that plugs into the back of the device and then you also get three nozzles so we've got an 8, a 6 and a 4 millimeter nozzle and they just push onto the end of the handpiece. Without any nozzles we've got quite a wide opening I think it's about 12 millimeters and it's got uh, a swirl pattern to try and cause the air to swirl around and cause a bit of turbulence rather than just having direct laminar flow. But uh, that's about it for the actual device, so what we're going to do now is take it apart and have a look inside. 
So the caseworks are all pressed steel it looks like and the front panel is made from plastic. And then here we've got the insides. Right, so this is all looking pretty good. We've got our IEC inlet at the back here with an earth terminal that goes straight to the chassis through a crimped and lugged terminal here. And then that comes back and connects directly to this EMI filter. Then our phase conductor goes to the front panel where there's a proper power switch. And then that comes back and connects to this EMI filter and the neutral just loops straight in. So this EMI filter is blocking any noise from being conducted back down the mains cable into your wiring installation. And things like DC motors, uh, brushless DC motors, sorry, and also things like high power switching of elements like this. And this will probably be switching at quite high frequency, create quite a lot of noise. So this will be blocking all of that and uh, providing EMC compliance. And then we've got our transformer here for providing the lower voltage signals. So the 1.2 kilowatt heating element will be powered directly from the mains, uh, switched through a triac or something like that but the brushless DC motor will probably be powered from this 23 volt AC uh, winding on the transformer and then we'll be deriving all of the control electronics power from the 12 volt AC output as well. So what we've got here is the brushless DC motor here mounted on some anti-vibration mounts and there's a tube that goes off straight to the front panel and off to the handle. And then this is the air inlet here with a rubber tube to try and attenuate some of the wind noise because if you have it directly on the orifice of the blower motor you actually get quite a lot of wind noise from the way that the air is chopped up just here. So this provides a bit of attenuation. We've got our AC coming in, uh, extra low voltage AC coming in onto the board here and we've got a bridge rectifier and a couple of uh, capacitors for smoothing but it is apparent that the motor is being driven from the 23 volt AC winding rectified and you can see here that we've got our H bridge motor driver so we've got a pair of transistors for each of the phases and then just behind this ribbon cable there's a little chip here and that's a MC33035 brushless DC motor driver chip so that can directly drive these gates on the MOSFETs and interrogate the speed of the motor and it basically offloads all of the motor driving um, from the main processor. So basically all we're going to have here is our speed control, our enable signal, probably a fault output from the chip because there is a fault output if the uh, motor isn't rotating properly and that will be used as a safety device to uh, turn off the heating element. Um, and that's about all you need to do to control uh, the brushless motor because everything else is handled on this board uh, with this motor driver IC. And then here we've got our front panel PCB and it's um, not too bad at all really. So on the right hand side here we've got our heating element control. So we've got a massive 40 amp triac here with a big heat sink for controlling the 1.2 kilowatt heater. Here's our optocoupler to provide the separation from the electronics here. And we've got a bit of suppression with a snubber network and capacitor and some uh, power resistors here. So that's sort of our heater driver. Mains comes in at the bottom here and then goes out to the front panel connector. Um, through these two terminals here and those all look to be uh, you know reasonably made off terminals we've got a microcontroller which doesn't have any markings on it whatsoever so I can't tell what that is but it would just be some generic 8-bit microcontroller it doesn't need anything complex to control this we've got our 5 volt regulator on a big heat sink and that is actually uh, soldered and lugged to the PCB so uh, that's nice and solid it looked like it was just hanging there at first look that that's all in there properly uh, we've got a bit of smoothing capacitors and some power resistors. The beeper, which I might cover over the, um, the orifice here so that it's not quite so noisy. And then we've just got a bit of analog electronics here. So this is just taking in the thermocouple input, amplifying it, and then sending it off to the microcontroller. So uh, nothing too complex, really. We've got our three push buttons at the bottom here, and the display is mounted behind the PCB. Uh, but nothing really too surprising at all. The overall construction doesn't look too bad. We've got all of our cables tied up and everything in heat shrunk um, so that they don't get caught up or in the way. All of the connectors are glued together um, so that they don't come falling out. Uh, as I said, the terminals are heat shrunk and uh, connected nicely onto these um, screw terminals. So yeah, really not a lot to complain about. It's not too bad at all. And if anyone spots it, there is a zero ohm link that's just bridging out two pads here presumably to disable this bit of the electronics that might be for a, a different version 
but that isn't hanging there, that is actually soldered between two pads. And in terms of the handpiece, this seems to be a really nicely constructed handpiece. It's um, fairly substantial. We've got about a meter of fixed tubing between the main unit and the handle. So that is fixed, but it's about a meter long. And the tubing carries the airflow, which is why it's fixed. And then the wires to the heating element and the thermocouple run through the center of the tubing. So they get a bit of airflow. Um, it does mean that they could probably use some slightly undersized wiring to power the heating element because it will get cooling from the airflow going through it. But uh, yeah, not really any complaints in terms of the handpiece. It seems to um, work really well. Some people may prefer the fan inside the handpiece and that just gets rid of this slightly bulky tube. But um, it's nicer to have the blower in the main unit just because you don't get the weird forces that you can get from having a spinning motor when you're moving the handpiece around. It can feel a bit strange. Um, and this just keeps all of the vibration in this device and you, um, you, know, you have a nice user experience using the handpiece like this. The cradle itself feels like it weighs about a kilo or so. It's really quite a substantial piece of metal and it has something in here that um, allows the handpiece to detect when it's inserted to send it to sleep. Um, but yeah, it's really quite nice. There's a little um, tool here so that when you've got any of the nozzles in you can pull them off. So you can put the uh, handpiece in here and pull the nozzle off if you want to swap the nozzle while it's all hot. Uh, but this is really nicely constructed and uh, the handpiece locks in there and it stays in there really quite well. So just for a little bit of amusement, we've got this uh, anemometer which came from Banggood as well. And I put the airflow on maximum and we can see what the velocity of the air coming out of it is. So it's almost three meters per second at 100% airflow. And then at 10% airflow, it looks like the speed is somewhere around 0.8 meters per second. And that seems to be sort of the limit before you start blowing around components. So uh, yeah, just a, a little look at the airflow coming from the nozzle there. So that's about it for the best BST863 hot air rework station. I'm not going to do any soldering in this video. Um, if you want to have a look at it in use, I did do a little clip in my previous video and I will be using it to construct some more projects that I've got coming up. Um, but you know, it does what it says it's going to do, get hot air out the nozzle. The fine control, I don't think you really need. That's probably my only gripe in terms of the user interface. You don't need one degree uh, setting even if you changed it to 5 degrees or maybe 10 degrees um, just so that scrolling up and down between temperatures doesn't take so long uh, you know you, d you really need coarse control if you're changing the height of the nozzle by 5 to 10 millimeters that has a much bigger effect on the temperature uh, you know than changing this by 5 or 10 degrees so um, that's probably the only thing that I would change on here just so that changing temperatures and that is a little bit quicker. So there we go, I'll put a link to the listing in the description down below, so take a look if you are interested in buying a hot air rework station. Given the output power capability that this has, this would work for the largest um, hot air rework type stuff that you'd ever want to perform. And then because you've got such fine control at uh, the low flow rates, uh, you know, you can do micro soldering with it as well. So a really capable hot air rework station. The build quality seems to be pretty good. Um, I think probably the only complaint in terms of the build quality is the front panel is quite a plasticky material. The stand is a very heavy metal, the handpiece is um, really nice, and the electronics construction and the general chassis is, is all really nice. So I think only the front panel looks very slightly plasticky. But my experience with the best brand stuff, which comes from China, is that actually it's very nicely constructed in general. So if you are considering buying something from this brand, so far, I've not really found any trouble with it. Even things like the solder paste seem to be uh, really nice quality. So hopefully you found this video useful. Leave any comments down below or if you've got any tests that you want me to do with this hot air station, then I can do that in another video. But until next time, thanks for watching.